Now, the purpose of this video is to show you the fastest way to do anything in Reaper. And instead of burying the lead, I'm going to give it to you straight up. The fastest way to do anything in Reaper is using keyboard shortcuts. While we can use menus and right clicking to find where things are, it's still quicker to use keyboard shortcuts to trigger them. For example, let's say we wanted to save our project. We can go up here to the file menu and choose Save Project right here. Or we could use Control S on the PC or Command S on the Mac to do the same thing. So we could do it from here, but it's a lot quicker to do it using the keyboard shortcut Control S on the PC or Command S on the Mac. And that saves our project. Or if we wanted to save project as a new name, we could use this keyboard shortcut instead or use the slow way using our menu. Trigger it from here and save it with a new name or use the keyboard shortcut to do the same thing. Hit that keyboard shortcut and it opens that same dialog. And we can do the same thing with our project settings. We can go to the file menu and go down here to our project settings, but it's a lot quicker to use the keyboard shortcut right here. Do it with the menu, opens up our project settings, or use the keyboard shortcut to do the same thing. And it works the same way to open up our mixer. We can go up here to the view menu and choose to view our mixer right here. But it's a lot quicker to use the keyboard shortcut over here. Control M on the PC or Command M on the Mac. Just hit that keyboard shortcut and it opens up our mixer. Hit that keyboard shortcut again to close it. And we can do the same thing with our master track. Go up here to the view menu and view our master track. Or we'll just use the keyboard shortcut or Control M on the PC or Option Command M on the Mac to open up our master track. Hit it again to close it, which is a lot quicker than going up here to the view menu and choosing it from here or hiding it from here as well. Just hit the keyboard shortcut to open or close the master track. Now, another thing you probably have heard is to right click anything in Reaper to see what we can do. For example, we could right click on an item and choose the item properties right here, which opens up the properties for that item. But it's a lot quicker, again, to use the keyboard shortcut. In this case, it's F2. Hit that keyboard shortcut, opens up the media properties, and just close it with return. Or we could split items by zooming in real close, put our cursor here, and right click, and scroll all the way down to split items at cursor. And that splits our item right at our cursor point. But again, we could do this a lot quicker using the keyboard shortcut or the S key. Put our cursor here, type S, and it splits the item right there. And we could also right click to create new tracks. Just right click on a track, insert new track, and that creates that new track. But again, it's much quicker to use the keyboard shortcut. In this case, it's Control T on the PC or Command T on the Mac. Just hit that keyboard shortcut and it creates a new track and add as many as we need. Now we could also trigger things using the actions list. So we can go up here to the actions menu and choose to see the action list. But again, it's quicker using the keyboard shortcut. In this case, it's the question mark. Just hit the question mark and it opens up our actions. where we could trigger any action we want right in this dialog. And we can see there's a whole bunch to choose from. And to see what keyboard shortcuts are assigned to which action, we can click in the shortcut column to see them right here. All the keyboard shortcuts that are currently assigned to these actions. But another way we could find them is to go to the Find Shortcut button. Let's choose this and just type in any shortcut or key. If we type in G, we can see the G key is assigned to grouping our items. So if we select a bunch of items, type G, it groups those items, which you can see up here in the media item button. So now we can grab one of them and they all move together, or we can cut them 
or paste them that easily. Or we could type in using find shortcut, the N key. And what that's gonna do is open up the nudge set dialog. So again, we could select some items, type N. It opens up the nudge set dialog where we can nudge or set things based on position or other variables by a certain amount based on different measurements. So if we want to nudge these items to the right, one measure and beat, do it right here, or go to the left, back and forth. And again, we could open that up just using the end key, which is a lot quicker than any other way we could do it. And we could also use the V key, which is gonna to toggle the track volume for any track we select. So if we select this vocal track, type V, it opens up the volume envelope for that track. Type V again, it closes or hides that envelope. And we could also use the filter to find any actions we wanna use. So if we type in zoom, all the actions with zoom in their name show up over here. The other ones are hidden or filtered. Or we could type in scroll, none of the actions with scroll in their name show up, showing us the keyboard shortcut that'll control those actions. We could also type in razor for dealing with razor editing and the actions that go with that feature. But speaking of razor editing, there's some toolbar buttons up here we could use to change how we edit in Reaper. Normally, if we right drag, it creates a marquee selection to select multiple items like this. But if you prefer to left drag, we could just choose this toolbar button and do the same thing with left drag. Marquee select our items like this, and just the items within that marquee become selected. Then deselect this and edit like normal. Moving it around, cutting it, pasting it, and so on. And with this button, you can do the same thing for razor editing. Just choose it, and instead of holding down a modifier and right dragging, we can simply left drag to create a razor edit area like this. Then deselect it over here, and we're back to editing like normal. Moving it around, cutting it, pasting it, and so on. But there's a keyboard shortcut we could use to choose these instead. So instead of going up here each time, we could do it from down here, wherever our cursor or mouse already is. So let's go back to our actions and type into the filter mouse override. And these are the actions that override our mouse based on these toolbar buttons. We could toggle the mouse override A through D. A is used for marquee select, and B is used for razor editing. So let's assign keyboard shortcuts to these. Let's right click this, a keyboard shortcut for this action. And Reaper doesn't use the A key, so we could use it for this. But you could also reassign any assigned keyboard shortcuts to do anything you want. And it will replace the original keyboard shortcut. So we'll type A in here. Let's go to this one and assign B to this one, which is also not used by Reaper, at least not by default. So now we could trigger these toolbar buttons using keyboard shortcuts. If I type A, it switches to marquee select. I could left drag to select my items, hit that keyboard shortcut again to go back to normal turning the override off. Or we could hit the B key to switch to razor editing. So now I could left drag to create a razor edit. And when I'm done, hit the keyboard shortcut again to get out of that mode. Or we could use some different actions. My personal preference is to use the until next mouse up options instead. And what that's gonna do just temporarily switch to those toolbar tools. So I'm gonna make this one A, which replaces the other one, and make this one B, which replaces the other one. So now they'll do the same thing, but just temporarily. 
So if I hit the A key, it switches to marquee select. We can marquee select our items. And if we let go or mouse up, it turns off that feature. So we're back to normal Reaper editing. Or we could hit the B key, which turns on razor editing, create a razor edit, and we let go or mouse up, it turns off that mode. So we're back to normal Reaper editing. And we could also use some other keyboard shortcuts that are not already assigned by default. One of my favorites is to color our tracks. Normally, if I wanted to add color to this track, I would right click and go all the way down here to track color and set this track to a custom color. We could do this with a keyboard shortcut instead. Go back to our actions, type in custom color, and there's an action down here to set our tracks to a custom color. I'm going to assign this to the C key, which again isn't used by Reaper by default. So now we can just select any track we want, hit the C key, and add a color to that track. And one of the use I want to show you is how to solo my vocal track. In this situation, my vocal track is track one. So instead of selecting it and then hitting a keyboard shortcut, which you could already do by hitting the solo button, we could do it from anywhere without selecting the vocal. Again, it's on track one. So we'll open up our actions, type into the filter, solo track one, and go down here to toggle solo for track one. And I'm gonna assign the K key, which again, isn't used by Reaper by default. But of course, you can use any keyboard shortcut you prefer. So now, at any point in any part of our project, I can be scrolled down here or up here, just type the K key and it solos my vocal. And we can do it on the fly. Easy rider on the highway. Station wagon going slow. Hit it again to unsolo it. Hit it again to solo it. And again, we could do this even if we scroll down to a different part of the project. Easy rider on the highway. Station wagon going slow. If we open the mixer, we could solo this vocal at any point. Easy rider on the highway. Station wagon going slow. And unsolo it the same way. And of course, you can use any keyboard shortcut you want to do anything in the actions dialog. Just find the action you want either looking through here or typing in the filter and just assign by right clicking a different keyboard shortcut or just do it down over here by hitting add. So that's pretty much it. That's the fastest way to do anything in Reaper. I hope you learned something. I hope you can use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.